So you can hear a lot of birds, along with some sawing in the background. And it's not even 8 a.m. <laughs> Welcome to Garden Sanity, I'm Laura. And today I wanted to show you what my garden looks like in mid-February. There's not much going on, but you can still find some beauty in the garden. So let me show you what I found. So the first bit of good news is the fact that the Color Guard Yucca is in one piece. There has been no sign of any rabbits so far. I'm not taking any chances, so I'm still spraying, but I haven't seen any rabbits and I'm thrilled about that. And that goes for my drift roses too. So, so far so good. I didn't have to use the chicken wire cloches like I used last year. What I like about the Color Guard Yucca is it's starting to get floppier leaves instead of just sticking straight out. Now this is the one that was chewed down to a nub two years ago by rabbits. So it took a couple years, but it's back nicely. And behind it, it's flanked with really pretty dried flowers of the Pinky Winky Hydrangea. Way in the back there, that purple that you see, that's Kramer's Red Winter Heath, and I'll show you that in a minute. But the other thing I wanna show you in this bed, and you may have seen this in a recent short that I did, a short video, but I've got crocuses all over the place in this bed. Now they aren't open yet because it's so early in the morning, but hopefully while I'm out here, they'll open and I can show you what they look like in a little bit. So these grasses look so pretty. They're not doing anything right now other than providing some winter interest and texture. They're very pretty. I was out here yesterday. It was 64 degrees mid-February. Crazy. We never have weather that warm. So what I spent some time doing is I spent some time clearing off leaves off of some of the shrubs. Now this is a pancake arborvitae. As you can see, it is pretty flat. And it gets this kind of dull, almost gray color in the winter. But where I uncovered the shrub, you see there is some green under there. But normally it's not evergreen. It's an evergreen plant, but it doesn't keep its green color. I wish it did, just since I planted it up front. Now here is autumn fire sedum. And this is what it looks like in the winter time. And I kept the leaves all around it just to protect the crown. Now you see this one doesn't have as many leaves around it. You can already see the new growth. See that in there? But I like to leave the seed heads on. They look kind of pretty. Kind of has a burnt orange color. Of course, that one's just toppled there. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> now this is a spreading juniper. I think its official name is leaf catcher. As you can see, there's a ton of leaves in there, which I did not get out yet. It's mid-February, you know, I'm gonna protect some of the hibernating and wintering pollinators as best I can. It doesn't bother me. Look at these pretty berries. Birds will like those. And then you got all the tete-a-tete -tete daffodils. And that's what these are. Again, don't be alarmed if you see your daffodils coming out this early. It's actually right on time and they know what they're doing. So it's still gonna be a while before they pop up, maybe another month for the tete -a they're early blooming. So this is the crepe myrtle tree. And I don't prune this back at all. I don't do crepe myrtle as they call it, where you lop off all the beautiful growth on your tree. We did take a few limbs off in late summer just to provide more light into the bed, lower limbs. But nope, I leave the flowers on and then the seed heads stay on the tree and then they fall off naturally. I think it looks pretty in the winter. And this is the two of the pinky winky shrubs that are on each side of the crepe myrtle. And you can see they keep their flowers, quite a lot of them, all winter long. Now we've had some battering storms already but it still provides really pretty interest and texture in the garden. And I won't prune these back until probably another month, mid-March. And then what you can also see underneath, let me get under here, 
next to the King's Gold Mop Cypress is you see more daffodils. Now these are Red Devon daffodils. These are gonna be larger and they're gonna bloom a little bit later. And then back there, all the little ones you see, those are the tete a -tetes. And then you got a few more daffodils hiding under this Gold Mop Cypress that again, will get pruned back. I didn't prune this one last year, so I'll prune it this year, again, mid-March. These three Mugo Pines are looking really pretty. Again, they have a similar name to that juniper I showed you. It's called Leaf Catcher. <laughs> and it took me quite some time to get all the leaves out and a few fell overnight. And you can see back in there, more leaves. But I leave the leaves that I can for the pollinators. I will take them out from different places. But I do try to leave some for the pollinators. And down here, I planted some tete -a tetes I planted those last year, so this will be the second year they bloom. So they should bloom a little bit bigger, a little bit better. And just to give you some perspective, through the little lime flowers, you can see the center bed that I had just shown you. And then we've got a row of arborvitaes. I gotta show you this piglet grass. It's on the corner and it just perfectly shows off itself with this rounded shape. It's like that in the summer and it stays like that in the winter. And you see a couple of fronds or flowers, I guess they're seed heads down inside the plant, but not really anything. I think the ones that were sticking out probably blew off by now because this is sort of a windy corridor in front of my house. Now next to the grass, you have a winter gem boxwood and because it's been so darn warm lately, it's started to turn green again. But you can still see the copper color that it gets in the winter time. But I'm amazed that it's already turning green. It's only mid-February, we could still get freezing weather, we could still be in for snow. We haven't had any this season except a dusting that I showed you in a previous video. So. As much as I get the itch to clean and prune like crazy for the spring, I'm not doing it yet because we still have a little bit of winter to go through. Now here you can tell all the disturbed earth. That was me yesterday cleaning up the Kramer's Red Winter Heats. They were covered with the leaves from, of course, the river birch here. Oh my goodness, I hear another machine across the way. <laughs> It's only 8 o'clock right now. Everybody's out early like me. So, you can see where I uncovered the leaves around the base on this one. It's nice and green. It stayed protected by the leaves. And that is a good reason to leave leaves on some of your perennial plants because it protects them. It gives them a little layer of protection from all the cold and the dry winter air. So because these had so many leaves on them, I think that's why not all of them have bloomed as vigorously as some of my older ones. But I also have, if you look closely, I have what appears to be a dead section. And I had a fellow gardener ask me about these. She has some winter heats in her, I think it's Baltimore garden. And I told her, stay tuned because I will be doing a video on what to do when you get those kind of sections because they can be salvageable. It just takes a little work. But again, it's mid-February, so I'm not touching these just yet. But they look pretty. Now, in terms of evergreen color, these are two dianthus plants. And I do have a third one down there towards the end of the bed, towards the street. And you can think of these as evergreen color for your winter garden. You know, people buy them for their flowers. This is a Japanese hellerai behind it. But don't just think of shrubs for evergreen color. You can think of perennials too. In fact, maybe I'll do a video on that. I will. You know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> evergreen perennials for your garden. Coming up on Garden Sanity. So stay tuned. So what's hard about cleaning the beds in the winter time is the sun gets so low in, in the afternoon. Look at all these I missed. The sun's almost really glaring. So here's a blue star juniper, and that's just up from the Japanese hellerai I just showed you. And next to that are more tete-a-tetes. 
And in front are some perennials that are not evergreen. And this is calamaris, also called false aster. And you see I'm keeping all the leaves around it to protect the crown. I'm sure once I cut these back for the spring and remove the leaves, there'll be new growth. You notice how short I cut these back, but I didn't cut them back all the way. I never do. Two reasons. One, I like the leaves to get in there to help protect the plant, the crown of the plant during the winter. And two, it's just an easier way to remember where your plants are. You cut everything back to the ground, sometimes it's a little hard. This is some Veronica I planted last year. Now, you may say, well, this isn't anything to look at, but how many catalogs are gonna show you what these plants look like in the winter time, right? Isn't it a good idea so you see what you're getting? <laughs> so this is what it looks like. Again, I cut it back, but you see, let me go down parallel to the, to the bleh, 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 parallel to the ground. How is that? <laughs> Now you can see exactly how short I cut them, but again, leaving enough so I know where they are. And there's another little one right there. So I still have flowers on the little lime hydrangeas. Not as many as when the season started, but they're still very pretty. Now this is one of the foundation beds and against the house are some Silver King Euonymus, looking all pretty. Their berries are basically dried by now so they'll start to fall off. And after you've had your euonymus plants in the garden for a while and all these start to fall off, you will get a lot of seedlings. There's just, I mean, these were planted in 2014. So, you know, it's nine years already and maybe that's part of the reason, but geez, I pick out a lot of seedlings, more than I'd like to. This is a combo of verbena stalks that are left over, verbena barnariensis, and then this is a large Russian sage. This is uh, Superba is the brand and the variety rather. And I'm going to transplant this in the spring. It's just too large for this area, but you can see all those what look like white dots. Those are already new buds coming out. You've got some tete-a-tete -tete getting ready to bloom and the rose bushes. God, I am itching, itching to do these, but I can't just yet. It's too early gonna wait another month but do you see the new growth look at that if you're new to knockout roses I have a great pruning video for you and I'll link to that in the description box below it's also linked up above and what do we have down here flowers look at this again mid-February the candy tuft is blooming I repeat the candy tuft is blooming how crazy is that? I guess it's not so crazy when you realize that our winter has been unbelievably mild. Now it's just this plant and a few others. You see the one next to it isn't blooming yet, but what I can show you close up, all these things that almost look brown, those are all the buds. So this thing's gonna be covered in no time. Again, way early this year, I mean way. Pretty. Did you ever notice that I like to use the word pretty a lot? <laughs> I know some of you have. Uh, I gotta get like a thesaurus out and have a list of words that I can use instead. You know, so I go like this and say, charming. <laughs> so those are the candy tough flowers. You've got some tete a -tetes. You've got a lot of leaves I still need to get out eventually. And that is a Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitae. It has almost of a, a blue-gray color, almost gray. At least it has for me this winter. But it'll get green in no time. The candy tuft curves around and then brings you to the lavender. <laughs> and you know from a previous video, and if you don't, I'll link to it above and below in the description box, in my how to prune lavender. I showed you these way overgrown, weren't really pruned at all lavender. And you can see what happens. See all that dead wood? So watch that video to get the nitty gritty on all of that. I did cut some of them already, but I still think I may try to turn one of these, at least one on each side of the front entrance into a topiary. And this is the lavender on the other side of the foundation bed. And 
I'm gonna try to maybe make this one into a topiary, standing rather upright. So I could probably get away with that. And then get rid of these other ones and plant some other flowers there. Cause look how much it's spread and why it's spread. It's not a true spread. You see that everything is just flopping down. It's taking way too much real estate in this bed. So there's the lavender over there and you can see how much more it has even spread over here with all the flopping dead stems. You got a few candy tufts starting down here on this side too, which is really nice. You've got a Japanese hellari, which provides beautiful consistent color evergreen, both in the summer and winter. And then my prized possession, Kramer's Red Winter Heath. I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can see what they look like when I first planted them. And then this past year, I got another additional shrub that started growing alongside them and he's growing among all the daffodils that have already been planted here. But you see there's more daffodils here. These are tete -a and then back there are Cragford and they'll bloom a little bit later, but who knows this year? Everything could bloom in about two weeks. <laughs> I don't know. Got a spreading juniper and then a beautiful, beautiful Blue Star Juniper. This one loves its spot. I think it gets more water than the other blue stars I have throughout the garden beds because it keeps its color. Look at that beautiful color. It's not gray. It's definitely still a beautiful blue. More happiness for me. Blue Pearl Crocuses. These don't come up every year. I planted these years ago and now they're starting to come up and I'm thrilled. They're just beautiful. They're just starting to open. They close up at night, open in the morning once the sun hits them. Now this lamppost bed, it took me a while to get to where I liked it. I'm gonna put up a picture just to show you the original lamppost when we moved in and what a disaster. <laughs> it was, the, the ground was hard to dig. It looked awful. I eventually gave up and put a pot there. But now I feel like we're starting to get there. It's not perfect yet but I love the Manhattan Euonymus. This took several years to actually like being an evergreen. The first few winters, it was a gross yellow in the winter and I was like, what did we do? But now it's a nice evergreen color, has a lot of pretty berries and it's even getting, look at that, some new growth already. See that little bud? It's crazy. But again, it's because we've had ridiculously warm weather. And then the Kramer's Red Winter Heath really provides a bright spot. Now what happened with these guys is you can see I had to prune back the Manhattan Euonymus because it was completely covering this section which just died out. So again, I will be doing some maintenance on that to fix that up. And then what I like about the rest of it, that's a, a Little Lime Punch Hydrangea that got a, didn't do as well as I wanted it to last year, but it was its first full season in the ground. So I have high hopes for you. I hope you do a little bit better this year. And then this is another Blue Star Juniper, also looking really nice. You know, when they're small, they can be a little frustrating because you're like, do something. But they're very slow growing. I mean, very slow growing. But when they start to finally fill out, Boy, are they pretty. So yeah, I'm really starting to enjoy this lamppost bed. It definitely needs more flowers, more color, but eventually the little lime punch should be three to five feet tall and wide. Between three and five feet tall and wide. I guess it can't be three and five feet tall and wide. That doesn't make any sense. Then spinning around, we're back to the center bed. This is another gold mop that I didn't prune these last year. I got to prune them this year. And the Orange Rocket Barbary doesn't have that many berries left on it. But I'll tell you one thing I'm going to do is I am going to prune this this year. You don't have to prune it, but I, but I am because the top growth has become really spindly and I really want to rejuvenate the plant. They say that what you should do is prune it after it has its beautiful orange spring color, but I don't know, I may, I may go for it sooner than that. This is down lower and we've got some tete-a-tetes. 
You got some new growth coming out on the autumn fire sedum that is here. Some perennials in the background. And then this is a sea green juniper and it's got beautiful, almost look like blueberry colors right now. Now I've shown you this plant before where the berries almost look like they are like a bright mint green color. But right now they're a beautiful dark blue. So this may look like a mess of leaves to you, but to me, I'm not touching it until a little bit later in the spring because I already see a bee in the distance. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to capture it, but I'll try. I see them on one of the crocuses that are opening up. So you got tete -a This mess here <laughs> that is still mainly evergreen are the geum. Uh, this is totally tangerine geum, three plants. And then I also wanted to show you, just so you know what it looks like, is the new growth that's coming out already from the bottom of the Starship Rose Lobelia. And I may not say that right. I always get the words not in the right order with this plant, so I'll put it on the screen, of course. And over here, are Petite Henri and Petite Jenny Lickness that I planted last year. And they're sort of evergreen. I mean, as you can see, we did have a deep freeze, which was uncharacteristic for us as well on the other extreme back in December. And that kind of instantly kind of froze the tips of these. It didn't kind of, it did. You got some more daffodils and then don't want to forget these guys. I am thrilled that I'm getting so many crocuses this year. Now these are the Tommy crocuses. They have a longer name that I'll put on the screen. And I purchased these after I planted all the blue pearl because the blue pearl were devoured by squirrels. And then in the springtime, rabbits came and ate the tops off. And so then I read about these Tommies that are darker purple and that squirrels don't like them. Well, squirrels ate a lot of them too, but these have survived so far, so good. And then look there, aren't they beautiful? Just for you, I am standing on a rock in the garden to avoid smashing the ground. And I've got a Barbary on my backside that hurts right now. <laughs> <laughs> but look how pretty these are. That's the blue pearl crocuses and then the dark one is a Tommy crocus. So thanks for coming on this little tour to see what's blooming and not and evergreen and otherwise in my February garden. I hope you have a great day and happy gardening.